Uh, you know, uh, really a good counter is no, it doesn't exist, it's just a good attack. It just happens to follow someone else's attack and be based kind of off the opening that they create. So, so far most of the counters have been done, uh, the techniques shown have been ground techniques. So I decided to do a standing. Um, one of the things you want to focus on is when you're getting your grip, is breaking grip in a lot of different ways. So countering starts with take, getting the dominant grip. So one of the things we drill a lot in here is we drill simply just hip bumping. So when Matthew comes in and he's going to throw his attack, bang, that's it. Drop the center, get the hips under. If he gets through, lock the hip. Bam. So that you're walking around the hip. You're, you're relaxed. Right? You're not limp, you're not tense, you're just moving, you're moving, you're moving. He comes in for a little bang, block, uh, block. So it's kind of a hip float. The other thing you can do is, and that right there is real slow. We're moving, he comes in for his break, boom, I block it, just take a little step and drive. That breaks the pull. Now I just re-grip, and all I do is clear come around and step in front. So one more time. This is just a real classic hip throw counter. He comes in, bang! Step, get a belt grip on this back side so I have a lift. Now all I do is puff and through. And when it's done fast, a lot of times he kind of floats. Another option is what we call a yoga tiny toes. So side valley drop. So he comes in for his hip throw. I beat it, but I'm kind of lifted. And I'm not going to get so I do I drop. And then take him in right away. This throw is surprisingly complex. In wrestling, it's called a lateral drop. So I'm going to break this throw down really quick. When you're dropping, you're dropping in and you're bringing your balls in towards their feet. The other thing you're doing is while you're coming down, at about halfway down, roughly, you start rotating to your back corner. So it's swinging in and looking at 10 or 11 or 1 and 2 o'clock if 12 is behind you. The other thing is don't block their leg high. It's not a he's a groom, it's not a knee wheel. It's literally blocking their foot. You can do an, an ankle prop version too. But how I practice this, and this is really important, is I'll step in and I'll not worry too much about what's going on. It's, this, isn't, this is just a drill to get this throw right. And now this foot's going to swing through. And I'm going to steer the bus as I go to my angle. So again, so you can see the back side. And this, this is really important to spend your time drilling this throw. If you miss this throw, you go to the ground and they stay standing. If you miss this throw, you can jack your knee. So we don't want that. So we want to be sure that it's smooth. In. And through. Like so. So, now with the hip throw, right, he's coming around. I'm stepping. Feet on the floor. <laughs> and come through. Good. So we're going to use a counter using... A couple of the things we built on in the last little segment. Um, drop, say, oh, I drop shoulder throw is very popular. So Matt's going to set his drop. We're going to do this nice and slow so everybody can see what's going on. We're, again, all these motions that we make in these demonstrations are really big. And that's so you can see where the hand's going, etc., etc. So anyway, Matt comes in for his throw. Pop. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift and step and bring him over setting that up okay a guy a lot of times on this throw doesn't he doesn't get you over so he comes in bang I step around snap uh oh Jigoku there's another version Right? It looks really big, but very, very common to have a guy hit this throw, miss it, and almost stand back up. Right? So, because it's, it's never quite so clean. So it's, it comes over, bang. And now all I do is, again, grip, step.
step, vine leg inside. Oh, he's almost getting away. I got to turn it. So you see that? He's going this way. So what do I? He's almost free. So how do I compensate for that? I swing, lift my hips, and turn in with him. All right. It's the beauty of grappling is there's thousands, finite ways to move the body, infinite combination possibility. All right. So in the other version, this is a koshi. This is a hip choke. <clears throat> um, same thing. That comes into the drop sailor nage. Bang! I sc scoot around. Now I'm going to do, and we were just talking about this, we're going to put this hand down and move. Now a lot of times people will reach inside, and if I reach inside, I'll only reach this way. I'll never put my hand on the mat, point it inside with the elbow resting on his hip. What I like to do is get this arm pressed right down against the next to his leg. Because really what I don't want is I don't want his hip to move. If I get to the inside of his leg and plant, as I press down, this elbow naturally fits right into the, the arch, right? Right into his pelvis. So now he can't move, and instead of hooking this arm fucking inside, where it could be locked or torqued, it, it, it's too risky. And speaking from personal experience, this is a variation that I worked out because I got my arm torqued. So it's here, and now it's right there. Now as I start to walk around, I press down with the elbow, pull up with the scarf, and then turn the corner. Now if I have to, again, this is like Shigoku, I'll grab that leg and bring myself all around the corner. It's a hip choke. Koshiwaza. He comes in, boom, plant and pull. You notice what I did here. He, was, he had a good pull on me. He, it was going to be hard to turn this corner. So what I did was, is I didn't pull back on the arm. I looked up and drew. I opened this hip up. Now as I start to turn, I'm just scooting this hand from here to here. And now it's turning the corner. Again, keeping a nice, tight, tight grip. Nice, keeping the fingers all together. None of this half finger in, half finger out. Dislocated fingers. Nice, tight grip. Relaxed, focusing, gripping on these three fingers, these, these last three digits, which allow a little more wrist flexibility. If you use the index and thumb, you're going to have a hard time turning and blending that, that wrist into the artery. So really focus on most of your grip coming from these three, and then these fingers are just there for a little added security or to actually get the lever. So let's do that show one more time, real nice and slow. He comes in. Bang! Press. At this point, I gotta be careful. I can't let it come up. I gotta get him spread out a little bit. See that motion? Uh. Now I turn. There's the hips. There's the grip. And I just keep walking. Walking all the way around. So, chokes uh, and counters. So I'm, I'm caught up. Thanks. <laughs>